Welcome. This is part two of our images collection. We had uh, created a Sherlock Holmes collection last week using the five JPEG images, and this is what it looks like. And what we're going to do is show some different things we can do using this collection. One of the more difficult things to do last week was to get the A to Z compact list index type working correctly. The problems with this type of index is that there's two different levels. There's the index entry or node level, indicated by the bookshelf icon and the text of the entry, and the record level where all the records appear. The difficulty occurs in that variables like link or icon do two things. They do one thing at the record index level and something different at the index node level. So you have to write your formatting code to account for these two levels. And our code did that. Uh, we had used the if macro to test for a uh, numleaf docs variable, and if it existed, we executed the code after the first comma. If it didn't exist, we're at the record index level, we executed the code after the second comma. And the other thing we did to add value was to uh, link our book Cover, which was the JPEG, which was our source content file, to the document text level using the link hyperlink tag. This allowed us to use basically a full web page for each record. Here we've added some value by putting in a embedded um, movie version. We've added some links and various other things. This is a very, very useful and flexible way of dealing with a digital collection. And here is the code we used at the document text. Uh, notice that we're using a href, the HTML, and the actual hyperlink reference, the URL, is contained in the DC metadata. So we've stored the URL in the metadata itself. We've also uh, put PDF files, copied them into our collections images folders, and created a hyperlink to those documents. Now there are any number of ways we can get to the document text level. Uh, the link and slash link is the tags in Greenstone that do that. What we put in between them though can be almost anything. We can use images, a thumbnail icon, or in fact the uh, original source file. We can put metadata elements like DC title or something. We can add an image and hyperlink it, the image uh, from our images folder. We could add just plain text, like view full record, or we could add uh, a source icon. For example, if we imported PDF files or Word documents or PowerPoints or MP3s, they are going to get an icon appropriate to that type of file. And we can hyperlink that icon to the document text level as well. Now what we're going to do today is show you a different type of index, a hierarchy. What's a hierarchy and how does it differ from an A to Z compact list. A to Z compact lists tend to be um, one level deep. So for example, if you're creating a subject index, you may find the index gets really, really long because each subject entry is one line in the index. Now, normally subject indexes don't work that way. Library of Congress, for example, allows you to drill down. 
Typically, you'll see such indexes used in thesauri. For example, if you're looking at the heading of acoustics, you might have drilled down to psychoacoustics, and then from there might go to farther ones. So it's a very handy type of index for anything where you want a short list of top categories instead of a very long one. Now, rather than add a subject index, I'm going to take a shortcut and use what we have. We're going to use what we've got in the date index, modify it uh, briefly, and that will illustrate the technique here. So first we have to go into the design tab and select the uh, date index and remove it. Now, once we have the date index removed, we're going to adjust the metadata. So it's off to the enrich tab and you're going to select each record in turn. And first we're going to make them all have the same top level. We'll make them all 1891. So each record will get 1891. Now once they have 1891, we're going to add a lower level of metadata. You do this by using the pipe symbol, which is the shifted key above your enter key. Uh, so what we have now is 1891 as the top level, and then a sub-level under that called April for the first record. Now select the second record in the uh, Enrich tab, and we're going to add a sub-category of June for that record. Now select the third record, uh, and we're going to add a DC date category of uh, September after the 1891 for that record. Now select the fourth record in the uh, list, our collection list, and we're going to add DC date 1891 and the new category will be pipe symbol and September. And finally the last record, uh, change DC date here to add a subcategory of September as well. Now that we've added a hierarchical structure to our metadata, now we only got it two levels deep. We could go deeper, for example, uh, say we wanted to put weeks in, or days in, hours, minutes, you could add that. Uh, makes no sense for uh, what we're doing there, but this is just an illustration. Now what we're going to do is go off to the Design tab, and we're going to select Hierarchy from the pull-down, and click Add Classifier to add our new index. Now for this new uh, index hierarchy, one for, we have to set the metadata field to be DC date from the pull-down. We may also decide to sort them. So the default uh, sort order for indexes is on titles. We don't think we want that here. Let's sort it on DC date so they come out properly. When we're finished, click OK. Now, when you're done, you can preview it. Oh, you have to create it first and build it. Um, and you'll see that we do have our categories. Now, our top level category was 1891. Uh, obviously, we'd have other categories, 1878, whatever the years are and months under those. This would be very useful for something like a journal where we wanted to have uh, volumes and numbers and then issues, right? That would work very well for something like that. It work very well for subject indexes or other types like that. Now, we do have some issues here. One is, of course, that our new index uses the default format, which is ugly. We've got to fix that. Also, the index the problem here is that, that bookshelf icon. How do you, would a user know to click on it? I think the idea is that it's books and you open them, but it doesn't look that clickable to me. Let's fix that too. So the problem with the bookshelf icon, the default icon, is it lacks an affordance. The affordance lets the user know what to do. This doesn't really look like it's clickable. It's a very two-dimensional flat object. It has no indication that there's something underneath it. Again, that's why you need the NumDocs being displayed. So the user sees the bookshelf icon and then they see in brackets some number like 3 or 12 or 52. They may then think, oh, there's something under here, so maybe I can click on it. So, But we want to replace that with a better icon. So I went off to the internet and lo, I found a nicer icon that looks like a file folder, so that indicates to the user there's contents and it has a plus symbol on it, which is typically used in tree type structures to indicate you can click it to expand to see the contents within. I've also grabbed a nice PDF uh, icon I may use as well. I place these into my collections images folder and in fact I put them in the Dropbox one, the week three folder there with the images so you can copy them to use in your week three enhanced collection. 
Now the benefit of putting uh, things in the images folder is it's just like a website with an images folder. You can stick images in it and then use them in your pages for various purposes. You can actually put more than images. You can put, as you saw, PDF files. We could put MP3s. We could put movies. We can put additional web pages. Anything we want to refer to in our website but that we don't want to be part of the collection. If we put these images and imported them into the collection, now they're going to get indexed, they're going to appear, um, we're going to have to deal with them. We may not want that. So this allows us to add things to our website that, but not have them in the collection content. The next step is to modify the format for our new DC date index, which is CL2. So it's off to format, format features, and select CL2 and click Add Format. Now the first thing you probably want to do is replace the uh, first line which uses the link icon link. What that's going to do is uh, use the bookshelf icon as the icon because it's at the index node level and it's going to hyperlink it to uh, the records that are associated with that index entry. So if we replace that using an image tag, we're going to refer to that folder image we put in our collections images uh, directory. That should give us a much nicer one. Well, let's do that and then preview it to see what happens. Well, it doesn't work very well. Why? Why doesn't it work? Because this is an AZ compact list type. So it has hierarchies or categories, which means the code we put in, unless we tell it not to apply to both levels, will. So we see the folder is there at the index node or entry level. That's good. That's correct but it also appears at the index record level. That's not right. That's so what we have to do is go back and change our code using if statements to write conditional so that some code is executed for the index entry or node level, other code is executed for the index record level. So let's go back to our HTML format string and change that first line. What we're going to do is add an if macro. So the if uh, is a little program. It's, very, it's exactly the same thing as the using the word uh, if functions in uh, Microsoft Excel. What we're going to do is set up a test condition using the numleaf docs variables. Numleaf docs contains the number of associated documents with any index entry. So for example, if you had an author index and Stephen King was in there, the 5,000 records associated with Mr. King would appear in that variable. So we can take a look for that. Now, if there's nothing there, or if there is something there, this becomes true. So what happens after the first comma is the true part. So if this is true, you're at the index entry or node level. So what we're going to do is display our folder icon, and it's going to be linked to the associated records. Now what happens after the second comma? That's the false. You notice there's nothing. We don't do anything. So if it's false, don't do anything. If it's true, Display the folder. So this works. So here's the complete code for our DC date index. And the code for a hierarchy type index is basically the same as an AZ compact list. Our first column here is checking to see we're at the index entry or node level. And if we are, we're displaying the folder that's going to be hyperlinked to the associated records. Um, you notice the comma for the faults is optional, right? We don't have to have a faults option, but it's nice to put it in so you know it's there. Now what do we do in the second column? The second column, we're going to display the thumbnail icon. You say, well, don't you have to use an if? How do you know? Ah, thumbnails only exist for source documents that are images. So what's going to happen here is if there is a thumbnail icon, it's going to be there, and that's only going to be at the record index level no thumbnail icons because they don't exist at the index node. So that's going to work. The third column is a bit more complicated because now we have to display the text of the index entry. But we have to make sure that we do it just for the node text and then we want to display the text for the actual record. So this is where we again need the if numleaf docs. If it's true, after the first comma, we're going to display some formatted index entry which is held in EX title. And then we're going to show the number of records associated with that index entry. 
Now, if it's false, the second comma, we're actually going to display some formatted metadata. So let's take a look at how it's going to work. So if our code is correct, the first column will contain just the folder with the improved affordance of being a folder that looks like it should be opened and it does look clickable. The second column will display the book cover, which is our thumbnail icon of the source JPEG file. And our third column does a lot. It's got to uh, show the text of the index entry or the title of the book and the metadata. So what we have here is the if, and you just see it's working. We will, if it is working, we'll get the folder followed by the first column, followed by uh, the text, followed by, in brackets, the actual numbers of entries, which is non-leaf docs. And then at the record index level, we should see the metadata and the thumbnail icon. Well, uh, save it and preview it, see what happens. Now, this technique can be used in lots of ways. Now, for example, uh, let's say you had a digital library of examination pieces uh, for certain levels. So, um, first index you may want to be a higher level one where the person's selecting an instrument, because we assume you want the instrument first. So maybe you present a hierarchy of guitar, piano, violin, whatever. The user then can select one of these and then drill down to the level they're at. For example, they may then select guitar, then beginner. And under beginner, they find a number of pieces that would be suitable for their level. They click on the icon and the sheet music is presented to them and they can play along. Here we see examples of other indexes. Uh, one is a geographical or location one where you maybe drill down and from Canada to province to uh, BC to then Vancouver Island and then places within that. We have one that's a personal name one where you could drill down by area and then within an area from Ontario, Southern Ontario, um, Woolwich, and then you can see uh, individual, excuse me, names within that. Here's the Queens. Uh, you may want to have, here's one by a, a genre, for example. You could say, well, I want to listen to some metal. You click on the metal one, maybe you're presented with now a subcategory of all the subcategories of metal there are. And then once you drill down far enough, you'll see a list of records. So a very flexible, uh, useful type of index to have. Okay, so that should give you some ideas of how you can use images, and they can be any kind of images, and the image is the source file, but it's going to end up really as a full record, and each record will be a web page. Uh, how the person gets to that document text level, which is the web page, will be through a variety of indexes. The majority of your indexes will be AZ or hierarchical type indexes. So that's where you really need to focus on understanding how those work and how you can use them. Now what we're going to do next week is take a look at a simpler approach, or a similar approach sometimes, using PDF files. What if we have a document-centric, text-centric kind of collection? So that will be next week.